Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Security Live, live at AWS Reinforce in Anaheim, California. We are streaming live 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific today and tomorrow, covering all things at Reinforce. Security Live is all about AWS security and solving those security challenges with our partners. I'm Ryan Orsi, one of your co-hosts, and I am really happy to introduce two special guests on this episode, Sean and Odin from Arctic Wolf. Hello, gentlemen. How are you today? Hey, Ryan. Great. Having a good time so far at the show? Yeah, excellent. Great time. Fantastic. Great time. Well, you know, what everyone wants to know is who you are, what you do, how you got to where you are. So I think let's do a little time for introductions here. Maybe Odin, you want to kick us off, sir? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Uh, yeah, Odin Olson. I'm responsible for business development at Arctic Wolf, which includes our uh, M&A and, and Alliance's activity, and of course, uh, working with uh, our great partner, AWS. Um, <clears throat> so just a, uh, you know, my view of Arctic Wolf, we're a security operations cloud. Uh, we offer, you know, kind of a, a one-stop shop for, for uh, our customers to take over their security operations, help them monitor all their attack surfaces, uh, wherever they are in their uh, kind of security journey, their overall uh, uh, maturity. We work with customers large and small and industries uh, all across the board, uh, uh, new and large and great AWS customers as well. And a super fun company to hang out with in the evening hours at Reinforce. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate Sean. that. We do try, we do try. Sure. So, uh, great to be here. Thanks, for, thanks again for the invite to be on the show. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm going to take that question a little bit different. Uh, as far as who I am, I work for Odin Olson. My job is to run the AWS go-to-market relationship globally. Uh, and how I got here, my background was more on the governance, risk, compliance, and privacy side. And I have kind of moved towards uh, MDR and uh, Arctic Wolf, uh, Security Operations Cloud. So Odin's description was right on for, for what we do and uh, how I got here was kind of a multi-year journey and Odin uh, rolling the dice on a uh, kid from upstate New York and here we are. Well, you guys really want to know how I got here. I could bore you with a great presentation on electromagnetism at some point. Maybe that's for later, folks, for later. Oh, wow. <laughs> but, you know, the, one of the things that we've been talking about, you heard it in uh, CJ Moses' keynote today at Reinforce, was operationalizing security and security operations cloud uh, provider. Um, I want to get into what that means to operationalize security. I think Arctic Wolf is uniquely positioned there. You're one of our, our great partners we got to know over the course of several years on how you work, how you do what you do, uh, working with our engineers as well on AWS's side. And that's when, that's when I really enjoy partnerships, is when we get into talking shop, uh, you know, even outside of the episode here, right? Outside of the show. But I really love when we get into these rooms and we think, think from what exactly are those customer problems? What are, what are you uniquely good at? How can we help you engineer that solution? And then of course, get that out to the world and get more people, you know, uh, uh, up, to the, up, up their understanding. We just had Paul Vixie here talking about investing in understanding. Mm. And investing in understanding also means um, uh, be, be, being sure to have all the signal collected from everything that, if, that a person, a company is running, wherever it may be. Yep. So much signal needs to be collected. Amazon Security Lake is obviously a key <clears throat> piece of how AWS is, is trying to kind of reinnovate that, that, that part of the industry, the security industry of collect everything, right? Get all the signal in. Uh, store it in an open format, not a proprietary format, and then have different vendors of the customer's choice analyze. I let the customer themselves innovate and analyze on top of that data. Um, can you kind of get into what does Arctic Wolf do to help companies with that, say, signal to noise ratio or just identifying the most meaningful security moments or uh, pieces of telemetry out well, there? Yeah, so maybe, maybe let's just back up for a second and, and quickly define operations. Sure. Because I think it's, a, yeah. it's an important distinction. You can... Um, you can buy tooling, set up tooling, imp implement tooling, and then let it run and do its thing, uh, but that's just insufficient, right? So that's where operations comes in. Like you have to operationalize, you have to implement, and then you have to operate the the, the output that you get because tools don't just run on their you own. You mean I, I don't just and, go to the board yeah, and right. increase my budget uh, for the next tool for the next year? Yeah, they, I mean, you know, if you if you think of a spectrum of all the risks that you need to reduce, definitely some of the things are going to be yeah. completely automated away, and your firewall is going to block certain things, and that's always just going to function full stop and there's very little you need to do, but that's not how security operations, you know, or that's not how security in total works, right? You're going to get telemetry, you're going to get content that, that's going right. to pop out from all these systems that are going to give you independent little components uh, um, and, and, and small parts of an answer, but putting those things together, like you said, in one place, normalizing the data at high scale, uh, and then take, you're always going to need some component of people and some component of multi-product telemetry to come together to learn things, whether you're using ML to, to, to learn those things, um, 
or whether you just need a person who just has the experience in the, the threat actor landscape to take um, uh, uh, that information and make it real and actionable for somebody who might not be as security savvy too, right? I was just going to, I was just going to interrupt you there for a second, yep. Ode, and you know, those watching, if you're not living, breathing, uh, say like a, in, in a sock every yep. day, um, and especially cloud, right? Cloud security telemetry can be different than on-premises or other yep. AWS telemetry from other clouds. It, the, the context really, really matters. And I think that's what you, you folks do really great at Arctic Wolf is adding that context for e even the folks that are in these socks or in these teams in a security team, and that is their day-to-day -day job is to understand the context of what they're looking at from multiple signal sources. Yep. Uh, or, and better yet, you, your organization as a whole really is a great option for companies to take a look at that maybe Maybe that's not their day-to-day -day superpower. Yeah, is being great yeah. at cloud security. Yeah, a, a, a number of our customers, you know, many of them are uh, not in a position where twenty-four by seven monitoring with with people makes makes good sense. So you just you absolutely need to work with uh, a provider that has a platform that's purpose built for delivering you an outcome. And when I use that word outcome, the outcome's got to be something consumable by the person who's going to fix the problem, which right. might be an IT problem, might be a you know, it's a it's a technical solve, but it isn't necessarily a security. Uh, solve and uh, I mean, just amp everything up times a trillion. The right. number of ob observations that we're collecting on a weekly basis, you know, several trillion observations that are processed by. Sorry, I would almost yeah, yeah, like yeah. Uh, I'd almost like put my finger in my yeah, ear yeah. here, but my, my headphones <laughs> blocked me. I thought you said a trillion. Yeah, well, you know, cloud scale. Wow, right? Like that scale. Born, born in the cloud, built in the cloud. Uh, you know, that that is our. Um, yeah, you know, very near and dear to our heart. We've innovated a lot in that space with with AWS, and yeah, we are we're processing trillions of observations every week. Amazing. And, and turning that into maybe even one single outcome driven for an IT person for an individual customer. And I feel like I feel like I owe it to Robert Tables here with a comment that is it S O C or is it SOC? S O C K. I, <laughs> I assure you, it's it's S O C. And he caught me out of my own game. I always tell people to make sure if you throw an acronym out. Yep. Define it. Yep. Security operations center. Yeah. SOC. Yeah. That's the, the that, that's the key. Yeah. The people at the screens, the processes that that help you take all that uh, that content and turn it into real security outcomes and, it, and risk reduction. You just nailed it, right? I, oper, I, I always talk about oper, oper, operationalizing security. Yeah. Tools, people, and process. Let's not over-index too much on the tools. The people in the process are very, very important. And uh, maybe you, can kind of, you guys can kind of talk about some of the automation aspects of what you're working on or already have available for folks. I think that's, that's a huge time saver. And anytime we hear the, the phrase time saver, that may, that's a big deal. Um, but not everybody's so comfortable with automating certain things. You know, should a, should a web server go down or get taken offline because something was found, a vulnerability was found? Uh, so, I love how you have context around what is running in that customer's environment yep. and what kind of automation actions can be taken against it. I think that'd be a good one to, to cover here, folks. Well, so, I mean, think about the, the data pipeline that we operate and exploding a little bit. Uh, effectively, you know, consuming the raw telemetry and then going through that you know, funnel of paring that content down, throwing away some things that aren't, aren't, right. aren't needed to be, don't need to be kept, et cetera, um, all the way down to, to, uh, to something mean, meaningful, that is its own automation. Right, for us, right? That's how we, we, we automate, we build rules, we have uh, customizations, and then we actually can interact with customers directly to, to tune that and tweak that for exactly how they operate. They, they do or don't want information related to, to uh, certain systems. They want to ignore certain things because of the way their, uh, their business functions. Um, and then we have a direct touch. So, you know, when you want to change how you respond, how, how your, your uh, uh, your Arctic Wolf platform operates, like you can get on the phone with us and like have that conversation and we can tune and tweak Pe that pipeline so it serves People you. can talk to people? Yeah. No way. Yeah. It, it's not just a chat bot that's trying to predict what, uh, yeah, a absolutely. I'm just joking, but yes, yeah. I think the, the, the human touch here is important to understand and the adversaries, even if they are machines now, they were created by the humans behind it, right? So it's important for everyone to remember, we are, we are yeah. defending against adversaries well, a human, human minds leveraging tools for good and bad, right? And it's important to keep that in mind as we go. Yeah, and, and in, a, in a world with you know, enormous uh, um, skill shortage in this area, communication is critical because you're constantly, I mean, you're, you should always be enabling and teaching non-security, traditionally skilled people more about security and that's going to be best done in an interaction about your data, about your response and, 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 and where you are in the kind of security journey. Uh, so yeah, being able to, um, do that with our with our customers one on one is uh, is very impactful and, and leveraging our platform to do it at enormous scale. One hundred percent. It yeah. it it means it's more meaningful to the learner 
Yep. He's investing yep. in understanding. I love that Paul Vixie brought that to us today, that complexity is always going to rise, but so should understanding. And so you have to keep investing in both. Yep. Uh, if, if you think about, to our platform, really to dive a little deeper into what Odin's saying, we're enriching and we're parsing data. So we're right. pulling from multiple sources of telemetry in the environment. It's not just a, a single source that we're pulling from. So uh, just thinking that through, our, our goal is unifying the cybersecurity market. That's, that's our stated mission as an organization. So in that, uh, to do that properly, you need the people and you also need that umbrella effect over what's in your infrastructure to, to make that happen. So uh, with the automation, back to your point, uh, when it comes to enriching, we're pulling from multiple data sources to make that data more relevant to the customer. And then when it comes to parsing, uh, we're taking away things that they don't have to action. So they can have more time back to do their job. They can have more time back to do what's important to the business and not spend their time looking through tomes and tomes and tomes of data. Yep. That's, that's a big part of what that automation results in from a business outcome. Got it. Yeah. You, you, hit, you hit on a key word there, Sean. Data. <laughs> I've been having conversations, uh, one with our, our go-to-market specialist team um, that I have to just toss in here, which is, um, wh where do dads store their dad jokes? Hmm. Think on that one. I, I think there, there must be some sort of special... In a database. Um, ah, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of, you had me. Speaking of, of data and databases, um, data protection comes up as a, a conversation topic with our uh, field teams, our solution architects that are out there having conversations with our mutual customers out there. Mm -hmm. Small, medium, large, largest enterprises of the world. We're having conversations about how the concept of data protection has evolved already and also quickly evolving even more as, you know, there's, there's, there's incentives for companies to store more, store everything, collect everything, analyze it later. So I know Arctic Wolf is uniquely looking at that or, and already has some great capabilities on data protection, but how, how, is, how have things changed in the world of cloud from, from the traditional on-premises world? Hmm. Well, I would say in some ways easier, in some ways uh, much more challenging. Certainly more challenging uh, by scale, right? Just the yep. volume of data you want to be encouraging uh, folks to collect because that, the, the value is in the quantity and, 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 and all of that telemetry. Uh, you know, and, and in some ways easier, right? The 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 chances that you're going to um, have a weaker system where the data protection is low in um, with an AWS where that's the the infrastructure is the bread and butter of the offering, right? Yes. Versus all you know, every time you add complexity of running something yourself, you're 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 introducing those potential misconfigurations, uh, you know, incorrect setups. I mean, even something as as uh, you know might sound mundane as like we don't have the proper controls on the door into a physical data center. But sure, like that's, physical like you're, security. Yeah, yes. you're, completely, yes. you're completely obfuscating that away um, in a, uh, you know, with, with infrastructure as a service where that's being, that's being owned and, and managed elsewhere. So um, it, it helps us because we can encourage folks to all, like, collect as much as you can. Um, you don't have to, you know, for, with, with Arctic Wolf, that, you know, we don't want to disincentivize that uh, for data protection reasons. Totally. Right? Don't, don't collect that because we, then we have to track it. And, and I, I just want to bring on screen, yep. uh, Robert Tables is on fire here with a question. The sophisticated data protection aside, large organizations are still leaking via unsecured S3 buckets. Does this feel like an impossible uphill battle? <laughs> now S3 is secure by default, so this is a highly, it's, yep. it's up to the user's configuration yeah, here. Um, well, again, 24 by 7 you know, eyeballs on, right? Right. So if, if, if you're collecting that telemetry, which is absolutely accessible and available to you, um, and there's automation that says when, when we see a thing that that needs to raise up to somebody to make a decision whether it's innocuous and approved policy behavior or un, unapproved, and then someone can, you know, either ticket that appropriately or depending on the criticality, literally get on the phone and, and resolve it. That So yeah, it's, it, I mean, Impossible uphill battle? No. I mean, is there are, are there still shadow IT challenges? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that's an Arctic wolf. Uh, you, you can't protect assault, what, you, what you're not yeah, looking at. Right, what, you're not, right. what you can't see, you're not protecting it. But the good news about cloud is you can see everything. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair. Absolutely. I, I think a good point to add to that comment, which is great. Uh, great comment, Robert. Um, is it impossible? Not necessarily. Uh, but it also comes back to kind of shining a lid on a skills gap that might exist between cloud pro providers yeah. and cloud uh, not necessarily the provider themselves, but the, the practitioner working at the company. They may have been sure. great at building up on-prem operations and systems, but when it comes to building in the cloud, they may just have a skills gap there. So closing that gap can be an important uh, area of focus for that business too that could help to, to uh, help on a kind of basic level as a building block. Uh, and yep. back to your comment too on uh, data and, and data 
protection, I think it's worth noting that uh, like there's government agencies that are asking you to keep data for a certain number of years. So you've got HIPAA, right. for example, that might say, please keep this data for seven years. That's a law. That's a problem for some organizations if they're doing that and they don't have good protection in place. So you've, you've got regulations that are forcing organizations to retain data. Mm -hmm. And then you've got organizations that are now under pressure from uh, new regulatory frameworks like uh, privacy frameworks that are uh, encouraging a concept called privacy by design. Mm. So privacy by design is asking you to limit the data retention. So you've got conflicting perspectives uh, from the security world and from the privacy world now. And, and that perspective is hard for any organization to process and requires even more and more knowledge of these regulatory landscapes to know what to do. Uh, so just adding that for context. And again, if that's, if that's not your superpower, right? Um, d d data privacy, cloud security, 24 by seven monitoring and response. That's why Arctic Wolf is such a successful business. That, that's what these guys do day in and yep. day out. And we, yep. we can't encourage more and more companies to take a look at, at the talents that you have, right? There, there is a, there is a, a skills gap in, in talented security engineers and general security analysts and then get into the world of cloud, it kind of narrows even further. Uh, but I, I love that we're both investing a lot of time, a lot of awareness and education in growing that next, the next generation of security professionals. It is evolving, right? The, the tools are used for good and bad, right? We've had a lot of innovations this year with uh, AI, generative AI, yeah. large language models, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and those are more tool sets, right? More tool yep. sets for analysis, more tool sets for uh, prediction, threat, threat hunting, exactly, and, and use cases such as that. Agreed. Yeah, and I think one thing to add to the data protection, not to go too far back, I, yeah. I love the summary, but it's, I, I want to add that uh, data localization has become very important too. And with AWS, data localization is possible at a global scale, and yeah. Arctic Wolf leverages that as well. So you have many countries that, for good reasons, want to protect that data of their citizens and not have that data be scrubbed by another country or reviewed by another country. AWS is able to position organizations like Arctic Wolf as a customer to be able to scale into different zones and regions and have dedicated servers and de dedicated content that stays local to that, to that area specifically. So uh, from a data localization perspective, that all com kind of comes back into the privacy concept yeah. and back into data protection. And I just think that that's an interesting connect in the context of, of that conversation. 100%, yeah. Sean. And Odin, Sean, um, you both can answer this question. It's how we're going to end this, this particular segment for right now. 10 seconds each, where would you most like to travel? Anchor Watt. Wow, that's awesome. That was really fast. That was yeah. so, that was so that was really awesome. fast. That was right on the, on the point. List. Right yeah. on the point. I, oh man. Uh, I'm just going to say Fiji. I'd like to go there. It's not that creative, but that's sort of, that's on the list for me. I think so. it's, I think both are very acceptable guys. Well, that was and? super targeted. <laughs> I'm, I'm still in love with Hawaii guys. Call, call me, call me simple. <laughs> Stay tuned folks. We're going to play a brief game here in just a couple minutes. I'll be right back with more guests on Security Live at Reinforce. <laughs> 